Now, post nut is what we call full clarity. This is when you've achieved your nut, right? It feels good. Now, the things that that woman is, is going to now affect you in a major way. And a lot of guys underestimate these things, but they become important after you've achieved that. All of a sudden, you're worried about these things. All of a sudden, these things matter. Now, for the woman's defense side, they're going to say, well, you should have asked me these things, and why did you do this, and you should have told me, and I don't, it's your fault. If she's the little cray-cray, right? We deal with the little crazy ones, right? Um, but is she marriageable material? One of the things I hold men accountable for is to stop talking shit about women after you fornicated with them. That's one of the most worst things I can, as a man, you the one piped her down, but now you got all this smoke for her, and that's because you can't manage your pre and post on clarity. So I always tell men, no nah, man, no, nah. don't talk to her. don't talk about her now, she yours. Okay? And you piped her, so she ain't no hoe. You a hoe, all right? Or where does that leave you? Go ahead and actually have accountability there. Uh, physical health, obviously, we got a lot of overweight women in here. We're going to talk about that. Emotional age. There's several ways to manage age uh, or, or measure age. Chronologically, you look on a calendar. Women they born, where they at now? Okay? Then their physical age. There's a lot of people that are a certain age and say, well, you don't look 56. You don't look 46. You don't look 23, right? That's because we measure age by a calendar and we actually try to associate development with that age. And not everybody falls in that. So that is called physical age. Then you got emotional age. Damn. People are, do not match their age emotionally. Women typically stop developing that emotional age when they physically develop. They say women start maturing faster than men. How many people have heard that? They mature earlier. Yeah, but they don't follow that off. Go ahead and follow that shit all until 30 and 40 and see where we at, all right? Because what happens is when you start to achieve success, you tend to stunt your development. This isn't just for women, this is for men. Basketball players, football players, it happens to them on the men's side. They reach great heights at 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and then they're still walking around like they're 16 and they're 40. Women do the same thing. In middle school, they'd be like, Hi, teacher, I'm doing well. Hi. Oh, look at the girls. They're so mature. Well, it's not maturity. They're just scared of looking bad. But we make that maturity. They're scared of the one to be just out there breaking the rules. We come in for physical education class. I'm about we scored a triple-double in PE class. We, we don't care about behaving well. But the women tend to carry that on. They call that maturity. Then they start developing after middle school and then the maturity probably stunts. So that then she's 40, and then when it's time to act emotionally, she might break down and cry like she's in middle school, right? And they'll say, I don't know why I'm crying. I know why, but I'm a misogynist if I tell you. This is what it is, okay? And I'm gonna tell you, you haven't emotionally matured. Okay, but it's okay. Um, there's a variety of things that we pay attention to now. You could say number of sex partners. These become important after you uh, pipe her down. You realize she's been in these streets. Now you're going to call her names. There's a lot of things that we talk about after the fact that we need to start improving on. You need to ask these people before the fact. Why not investigate this? Why don't you do your due diligence? Now, I know women got smoke for men in the dating marketplace, but they got a right to because you're practicing this. Okay. You think these people are all good, but you're not really investigating them. Now, I know it's hard. You see the booty. And the titties jiggling, right? It's hard, I know. But at the same time, if we manage our side of the, uh, the game, we'd actually make the game a little bit more fair. So it's not all women's fault. We actually bring a lot of smoke to ourselves. All right, let's go down here. If you guys want to check that out, I talk about that quite often. This is the marriage wheel. It's a little bit blurry. But we talk about how men get involved in these marriages and why the divorce rate is actually a lot more than 50%. These are people who legally detach. They don't talk about the ones that the woman told them to look over that cliff right there. You see how far that is? Yeah. If I drop you, you asked out. She just showed you the ledge and you'd be like, God damn. 
So down there, or I don't get to see my kids no more, huh? And I get to lose my house, huh? And the car, everything I work for, it's cheaper to keep her, baby. Happy wife, happy life. We could just be roommates as long as you See, that's probably additional 25% of people, okay? So the divorce rate, marriage rate, divorce rate is way higher than it actually is. But people don't mention it. So I tell you how you got into that. The connection phase, she tickled your balls and you liked it. She gave you access. Hopefully you investigated her. Most men don't. And then you get into the investment phase and you're feeling good. You think you're doing the right thing as a man. We're going to talk about that in the dating. I'm doing the right thing by society by doing this. And then you say it's a rite of passage as an adult, as a male. I need to be here for my family. I need to get the house, the car. I need to make sure her hair is did. She got the weave on point. I got to make sure we go on family trips so we can get the fake book, uh, fake book uh, pictures. Happy fa We got to do all that. We got to send the kids to the good school, move into the neighborhood and whatnot. That's the investment phase. This is the phase that most women look to achieve in the transactional relationships of marriage. Because if you don't invest, very few marriages are going to go past this, right? And she's got to know you're going to invest. This is the will you're on. This is why she says, do you have a good stable job, sir? What do you see yourself in five years, sir? All right. What type of kids? How many kids you want to have, sir? What neighborhood do you like, sir? Public or private school, sir? These are all inqu uh, inquisitions to investment stage. As a man, we have to know this is coming up. If you fail in this endeavor, well, you're not going to have a good long marriage, okay? Don't listen to this equal partnership bullshit. That's feminism. We'll go over that, okay? Now, next one is going to be the bait and switch. Obviously, this is when they say, well, I would never do that to you. And I'll always make you ham sandwiches. And I'll never restrict sex from you. And I'll never go in to, uh, to your children. And, and I'll, I'll never take your children from you. I would never divorce you. I can't even understand why women do this. I can't stand those women. I'm not like those. And then she becomes that. This could be as simple as you like long hair and she chops her hair off. Or she blows up like the Goodyear blimp. Like she was thin and now she's not. Do you still love me, though? Well, I guess I have no choice. <laughs> yeah, I love you. See, these are the things that's going to happen. Now, do men bait and switch women? Women come on my channel. Men bait and switch. We're not talking about me. I know. You want me to always talk about you, and then I'm talking about you. You want me to talk about it. I'm, we're talking about you. I don't date men, so I'm talking about I date women. I don't talk about what I know. Or... A lot of things could happen in the bait and switch. Now, in the bait and switch, she then says, well, the next step is disengagement, which is divorce, and um, you either accept me or not, okay? And then you get caught up in the, uh, okay, baby, or you say, man, F all that. I'm a man around here. I'm going to stand on my two, okay? I'm going to stand on my square. You do what I tell you to do. Now, you better hope that she says, okay, because if she doesn't, then you go to the next step, which is disengagement, okay? So... More than 75% experiment with disengagement or they go all the way through, okay? 50% we know legally, they say paper. But there's another percentage of men that say, I want to save for the kids. I don't want to lose my house. Um, I, it's cheaper to keep her. So they stick around and they go through this and um, they, they avoid the disengagement. And then at some particular point, this is where men screw up amongst the other screw ups. It's the go your own way or the reentry. What is the second, uh, second marriage divorce rate? 63%. Third marriage is 70%. It's damn near a guarantee. And those are the people who legally divorce. These are the people who say, these are, they're not including the people who are thinking about it. <laughs> Many people in second marriages, they, are, they, they essentially say, oh, fuck it, I'm screwed. All right, everybody knew I lost my first wife. If I tell them I lost my second wife, then it's a reflection on me. So I'm going to just go ahead and put up with this bullshit. Okay? Now, these second and third marriages blow up quickly, like in two to three years. It's already done, though. 
but you re-entered and then you started back here. And then you went through this. Now, some wise men come along and say, oh, hell no, I learned once, that's it. Those are the men they call bitter and hurt. Oh, you just bitter and hurt. You just mad? No, I'm smart. <laughs> okay, I realized I ain't going through that shit again. And I'll just go ahead and find another way to live, which I then go back to the dating marketplace.